Miss Plum won't watch any of my videos unless she's in them. And even if she's in them, she probably won't share them. And yet we have this TV show called The Love Prophet. We're on The Love Prophet. <laughs> and I'll go figure that one, eh? And Miss Plum, who's, holy cow, she has a lot of love in her life. She's got a lot of people who want to be with Miss Plum. A lot. And it's a little insane to be on the outside looking in on someone else's sex life or romantic life or any type of love life. I tell you, it's not something that you kind of want if you don't have much of a sex life. I'm not saying that I don't have much of a sex life, but if I didn't have much of a sex life, it'd be a little bit overwhelming to sort of know that this person is having sex with anyone they want, wherever they want. It's not quite that bad, but there seems to be this attractive quality to it that just attracts so much of that type of thing. And then as a love, like I'm, I'm trying to bring in this world changing, transformational consciousness stuff. I, I want to bring in, there's this evil cabal that's trying to take over the world or has taken over the world and they're about to screw us. I don't give two shits about Miss Plum's romantic life, but most people are so concerned with their own romantic life that I, I have to understand the mentality because most human beings put all their attention or most of their attention into their romantic life and they miss the big picture. They don't give a flying fuck about what's going on with the you know, Federal Reserve, they don't give a flying fuck what's going on with the banking system. They don't give a flying fuck about what's going on with the evil cabal that's basically trying to completely imprison the whole human race to greater degrees of insanity. And so I've been working on this idea of a show with Miss Plum where we combine the two things, where we're looking at how do we transform this world's economic system and we look at Miss Plum's romantic life. And I got to tell you, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, have you ever actually listened to someone else's sex life? Have you ever actually been in the inside of someone who has a very different world than you? Like, who gets that type of information? Nobody. I do. I'm like right there. I, I, I have this ability to talk to people. Well, actually listen to people. I mean, most people don't seem to really want to talk with me. They just like to talk to me. They like, they like me to listen. So Captain Sweep listens. And so Miss Plum tells me all her stuff. And then I listen. And then I, Captain Sweep tries to, to say something that's useful or maybe wise or maybe like who gives a fuck i'm trying to change the world can't you just fucking deal with your own sexual problems but it doesn't work that way like miss plum is a mystery like i gotta tell you that my life if miss plum is not in it is basically horrendous like she has this power over me i don't know what it is and it's, it's not like we're having sex we don't have sex She's like a muse. I don't even know what it is, but she's got this, this, this thing. And when I'm, when I'm not, you know, in rapport with this thing, I'm just fucked. And as, as a wizard and as a captain sweep, um, just wait a sec. Uh, Hello. yes. Hi, how are you? I'm in the middle of filming. That's what always happens. People interrupt Captain Sweet. They don't understand that I'm filming. You know, it's a web TV show. Like we're trying to do something here. See, I'm going to give you the inside skinny on Miss Plum. She's, she's just like most young women. She wants to find her man. 
She wants to find someone to love. And the thing is, you know, there's all these men that are attracted to her. But she knows there's this deep love that she can get from one person, maybe more. She's felt it a little bit. But she wants the, the big love. She wants to be with somebody who just makes her swoon. Who, when you're in the room with them, all of a sudden they just, everything's just perfect. Or so people think, right? I mean, if you look at our romantic lives, what do we want? We want to be touched. We want to be seen. We want to be supported. We want to be held. We want to be empowered. We want to be nurtured. We want to be ourselves. We want to know we stand for something. Like, what is love? Like, who are we as human beings? Why do we do what we do? What is this power of love? What is this power of love? Like, why will a man or a woman do something for someone? What is this power of love? Why will we do things that seem impossible for people? Because we love them. Like that's such a strong power. Mothers have it for their children. Fathers have it for their sons. Humans have it for other beings. We love. We love. We want to be loved. It's what every spiritual master talks about. Love. But how do we communicate it? How do we communicate love? How do we say we're sorry? How do we clear the air? How do we make things right? How do we know when we've hurt somebody to send them a kind note and say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I hurt you. When you love somebody, you don't want to hurt them, but we do. You know, we're all selfish in some way. We all look after ourselves. But true love is that energy, that feeling, that meaning, that being, where you just you look out for the person. You enjoy the person. You let the person be who they are. You don't try to control them. So many ways humans control each other. So many ways. But deep down, what we all need is people around us that love us. And when that happens, when around people who love us, but we need wisdom, you know, we need to understand we need to truly understand what it means to be human as a human, in a human form, and how to be with other humans. <sighs>